Okay, so I'm doing the uh, painting part of this thing. I went ahead and I lightly sanded all of this down a little bit earlier. Uh, ooh, what grit did I use? God, I think it was 200. I think. Ah, I don't remember. Sorry. But anyways, sand it lightly um, for this front part where it has all these um, details and molding carved stuff. I use this spray primer to get in all the little the little nooks and crannies here um, just because it just makes it so much easier. And then um, I ran out of it because I didn't have that much, but I knew I wanted to prime at least this front part. So the, the rest of the TV, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do that. I, I do have a giant bucket of primer, so I'll do that with, um, you know, a brush or rags or brush or whatever. Because at least the rest of it is flat, but I did prime the top in the spray paint. Again, that'll just make your life a lot easier. I also went ahead and I did this kind of backwards because I figured it would be just easier on me in the end. I went ahead and I already decorated the inside. As you can see, I put a nail and my little lamp thingy up in there. Um, I glued down my little flowers. I put the wallpaper in the back and then I also kind of did like a half and half thing. So I have the wallpaper and then I also put like this thick spongy foam, poster foam, foam in the bottom. And then I also put, if you can see here on the, on the edge where it merges the wallpaper to the foam, I use caulking. I don't know, I just love that stuff. It makes everything look smooth and joined and beautiful. So I did that. And yeah, I'll just keep painting. That's that's what I'm gonna do. So basically after I primed that with this, this you know, the spray paint as you're looking in the pictures and I finished priming with the bucket of paint. It was a big white thing. You go ahead and you sand it down just a little bit more and you do it you know painting really takes um that's just as long as taking it apart well, you know you know i'm just going to go go for it and say it's longer than when i took this thing apart um so yeah going back to the backboard um i did that first rather than doing it last just because like i had mentioned it would just be easier on me so i cleaned up the back i prepped the surface i you know, I wiped down the little fuzzy hard wood cardboard thing that that's the backing for this TV. And then I prepped it in something called gesso or gesso. I'm not too sure how you pronounce it. It's G-E-S-S-O. You buy it in the painting part and like art supplies painting of your craft store. And what it is, is just a white surface prep. So it, it really helped in smoothing down all that fuzzy stuff and prepping the surface. So that way the contact paper would have something better to adhere to and not just that but also gluing down that foam board to make it look like half wood molding or whatever half wallpaper as you see in some people's houses so that was a look that I was kind of going for um I hot glued the flowers to the board but before I did that I stuck some long thumbtacks behind it so at the same time I shove the little flower things into the thumbtack with hot glue just as like a double um you know double thing to keep it from peeling off or you know the thumbtack is giving it structure there it is that's what i'm trying to say it gives it structure so after i did that and i primed everything as you're looking in the pictures i did two paintings now this is where you can kind of go nuts and spend a ton of money or you can try and keep it economical. Obviously, I wanted to make the most profit out of this. So I tried not to spend, you know, way, way too much money on the paint. Because when I went to Lowe's, you can easily spend $70 on paint. It's, it's crazy. I was trying to see if they had something cheap. Maybe I should have gone to Walmart. But all that Valspar type brands, you know... Dutch Boy or whatever, you know, those expensive brands that they sell at Lowe's, it's like 25 bucks, 30 bucks for just a, like a 916 milliliter can of paint. It's ridiculous. I didn't want to pay it. And then at first I, at Lowe's, I kind of got lost. I didn't know what I was going to do because I did not want to spend that much money. Um, so what you can do is this is something I found out and I should have thought of this because I do this at like every store, not just with paint, but with anything that I, I go shopping at. 
When you go to your Lowe's or Home Improvement store, try and find their clearance section. There's gonna, every store has one of these. There's like a clearance section. There was one in the paint department, I guess, of people who didn't claim their paint or whatever. So I kind of just had to make do with what I had. I bought two 960 milliliter cans of paint. They were $5 each. And I just kind of looked and see what colors they had. And I just worked with it. I found uh, that real pretty mint green and a gray. And I was like, hey, these colors work. 10 bucks. These are going to color my whole TV. Boom. I got it. So I bought those. I only spent $10 in paint. And then at the dollar store for the the back part of the the board, the decorative things, I spent like $4 at Dollar Tree. So all in all, with materials, I spent $14 of course, labor, you know, tons of hours, tons of hours. I'd say at least 12 to 15 hours working on this. Um, I did end up figuring out how to take off the hardware and I did take those out and I cleaned them and then I spray painted them with um, this color called Hammered and you can buy it at Walmart or wherever. It's it's just, a, I think it's a Rust-Oleum brand. It's called Hammered and it just makes things look kind of like it says hammered like metallic but hand painted or, or hand hammered or whatever it looked really cool it worked again make do with what you have if you need to buy spray paint by all means go buy spray paint you know I, like i say i always got a bunch of crap in my house so i was able to do a lot of this stuff without spending too much money like the bucket of primer i already had it and also if you're going to invest in a primer like i did um that bucket of primer that I had bought a long time ago, it was also a stain blocking primer, which is great, especially when you're working with antique stuff. You don't want the paint just seeping in and then all those nasty old, you know, patina rust, nasty stains or whatever that were in your antique come back up and they make the paint job look horrible. So my suggestion is to definitely invest in a stain blocking primer to do this. Of course, your sandpaper, um, also, please do it if you're going to do anything like I did on that backboard inside the TV, buy that gesso stuff. It's really a godsend. I love it. Um, so again, it's a surface preparation. But other than that, yeah, once I took the main picture, the last one, as you see, when it's completely done, I sold this within about a day um, and I got lots of great feedback on it. So I think this is something that I, I do want to try and pursue as a hobby. I am doing another one, actually two more at this moment, a very small TV. And um, I'm doing my the one that I had in my kitchen. I just decided to sell it for financial reasons. I need to make some money this month. So a lady also bought that one the following day after I sold the first one. So it's really it, it, it really seems like a great little side business to, to get into. You know, and I really put my heart and creativity into these and you should too. And it's just a great piece. And again, the one that I sold that you're looking the pictures of, that one was um, solid wood. The one that I have, my personal one, I came to realize as I was working on it, most of it is plastic. The wood grain thing, it's like, it's all plastic. But the one that I sold first was solid wood and it's great. You know, you can definitely advertise it as another piece of furniture people were messaging me they're like oh i wanted to buy it it's too bad you already sold it i was going to use it as my dog bed and to hold my tv or my dvd player for my you know like because it was just it's solid wood it's just made so great like you could put real heavy stuff on it and it would take it um but that's all i pretty much have sorry this last part just pretty much turned into a podcast basically but i just had to work on the first that one so quick but at least i took pictures and you're able to see the different steps um you know get creative with it. If you want to do it all in one color, do it all in one color. If you want to do it in different colors, like I did, I did the two colors, you know, get your masking tape and start marking off the spot that you're going to paint it with and just go to town. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something, put it to good use because I don't see any other freaking videos on YouTube explaining it in depth as much as I have. So please take what I have the information I've given you and go with it. You can do it. You can do anything you put your mind to. All right. Have a good day, you guys. Thanks. Bye.